So I had the pleasure of seeing a brand new movie um, last week. It's called The Flood. It was difficult. Um, it was really honest. It was um, definitely something that I think is really necessary. And I want everyone to go and support it. Have you ever been arrested, convicted or charged with a crime in any country? Ask again when, dear. Don't think you heard the question. Um, Ivana, um, you playing Hayley, mm. I was just like... I was taken by what he went through, so I have no idea what you felt like. But um, what sort of research did you do, and how, and how did you disconnect from him when you when you kind of had to leave him? Um, that took a while. Yeah. Um, I'm saying that the experience kind of bore heavy, physically yeah. and emotionally. Quite often there were points where all of the artistry kind of fell to the wayside, and mm. the reality of the situation hit you. Can you just break down what he goes through? <laughs> yeah, so Hailey travels 5,000 kilometers to get to this interview room where he meets Wendy, the Nahidi's character, um, which entails escaping his country, yeah. his mandatory military service with border guards with shoot to kill orders. And he's um, been already like beaten and Beaten stuff. and battered and yeah. bruised. Mm -hmm. um, obviously getting in contact with some sort of smugglers to get him across the span of Africa to the north, uh, Sahara yeah. smugglers and then crossing the channel and somehow a lot of this on foot and some of it, uh, you know, by boat. Mm. But the I'm thing assuming. is, before you get to Wendy, the yeah. immigration officer, and I, I thought I knew a lot mm -hmm. and I learned, so thank you, mm -hmm. Anthony, because I learned so much more. Mm -hmm. You realise anybody that's going to put themselves through all that mm -hmm. and then get to a place where they're just going to put an X and send you back yeah. has already got to be in such a difficult place to think anything is better than this because the situation you see Hayley go through he could have died at any point yeah mm -hmm. but he kept going with this hope of this and to like this kind of desire that there was going to be something at the end of it exactly mm -hmm. it's, it's it's the desire for a better life and i think we can all relate to that mm -hmm. um and the calais especially it, they say it's a place where dreams come to die because you, a lot of the, I like that dreams that come well a to lot die. of the journey is Ooh. quite rapid moving up to that point and then suddenly you get stuck in Calais and every mm. night you're trying to get on a lorry and every night you get chucked off or uh, it's only really the young people who who have the strength really to do mm. it um, the old people and the sick people get left behind so it's very it's a very depressing place Calais it was very very intense its own little town with its own little sort of churches and, <laughs> and groups and things but in the winter it's it's just tense you mm. know you and Wendy and Lena like the relationship that you guys have a lot of time it's about you two mm -hmm. and you telling your story whilst you two are sitting there in that interview room um a very unlikely story as well from two very starkly different worlds she's a tough mean cookie mm -hmm. to start off with let's be honest her <laughs> boss philip is awful yeah. Yeah. but she warms to you yeah. um yeah. as an actress she's incredible yeah did you have like the gassed moment where you were like, and Anthony was like, okay, yeah, I know you love Game of Thrones, but like behave. Like, did you get that out of your system straight away? Oh, I think the work kind of, <laughs> kind of drew all of the seriousness. I know seriousness it was so serious, the, but you know, did you fan, have a moment before? The fanboy was in there, but deep behind the eyes. Yeah, uh, <laughs> deep behind the eyes. <laughs> um, yeah, it was fantastic like? to work yeah. there as well. Yeah. Um, I was just saying that the story itself is kind of, is epic and tiny. And we spent a lot of time mm. in that room together, you know, across the room. And, I mean, had the benefit of, you know, literally playing scene by scene with her. Mm. And then uh, the way they format the film is, you know, sort of jump between a short hiatus for the audience yeah. uh, to gather themselves and going back into the epic journeys and the effects of this situation on both sides. It translates on camera, the energy, uh, and also it translates off set. And, mm. and when you are doing these harrowing scenes, you know, it's amazing how silent the crew go and, mm. and tears appear in people's eyes and stuff, you know. Yeah. It's very, with such a serious subject matter, it, it, yeah, it is difficult. To and for you as a director, seeing these two actors, like acting out the vision, the ideas that you had, um, and I know there's a writer and there's the rest of the team mm. as well. Um, now looking at the film, are you happy? Are you pleased with what you did? Because it's such an important conversation mm. that you're having with people. Yeah, absolutely. And, and we've had some really nice comments. People saying, you know, it's balanced and it, it wasn't preachy and things. And this is exactly what we set out to do. We just wanted to tell a very human story. These two people meeting in one room and just communicating. Mm -hmm. And throughout the length of the film, you know, they affect each other's lives. And I think that's, that's really important. And I think it's a lesson for all of us, you know, in this time of Brexit and Trump and things. It's just to 
to heal and listen and understand and I think that's the way to sort of grow. Ivana like for you as well like obviously I'm a minority you're a minority and we understand what that feels like my mum and dad are from different parts of the world I'm sure yours are as well and then you must have felt even more of a responsibility thinking I want to show this guy in the right light and I also want people to understand he's not coming here begging for a job or trying to take something he's a smart individual you could see that throughout the film how much he was caring for others mm -hmm. um, and, and then, yeah, I yeah mean, like, it, how did how did that aspect of it like, yeah, sit mean, with it was, you? It was great kind of building a refugee superhero. Yeah, of he sorts. kind of I was, mean, I you know. His superpower was yeah. clarity and honesty mm. and sort of seeing through a lot of the bull of it and mm. cutting through the humanity. And do, what would you like people to take from it when they watch it? Like, because obviously I think the conversation itself is really important and just the mm. fact that you're putting um, a story to people they're not just a statistic you know they're not just an ex yeah. Yeah. these are real people like for you yeah. like with you like what would you Ivano like what would you like people to think about or take from the film when they watch it I think it's a great antidote to this misrepresentation mass misrepresentation mm. that a lot of so that some media outlets and some politicians on mass um, are responsible for um, and sort of gives back the dignity to these individuals, families, scholars, business people that have sold up everything on the hope of something better. Not necessarily something better, probably ending up in, in counseling estate and... <laughs> yeah, but that's the other thing, is like the but ironic thing is, they yeah. go through all of this, something that's still quite bad. Yeah. You know? It's not like yeah. they've won the lottery, they don't come here and... You know. I know, but people have this impression, don't they, that you're coming here for an easy life and you're like, mm. no guys, it really isn't that. Mm. And I hope it sparks that conversation. It does, I think it that, should. That, 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 yeah. that, you know, that some of these more people in power mm -hmm. um, feel the onus to start to access the problem from the source mm -hmm. and to sort of not ask why they're here but ask what people are running from and what yeah. can we do about the situation or right. advise on as opposed to sort of passing on the buck or ignoring the fact that the jungle is housing almost <laughs> 20,000 in, in the four courts of Calais. Mm. I mean, this isn't a this isn't anything that's going to disappear anytime soon. And I think it's a humanitarian problem at the yeah. moment, not a refugee I crisis. I think with everything that's happening in Sudan right now and all the conversations that we're all having, like I think this film couldn't come at a better time. And yeah. I think it's important for people to start looking at people that aren't necessarily in front of you as human beings and understand them, relate to them and have compassion and not just see them as they're so different to us, we don't have to worry about them. Yeah. Or occasionally we put a bit of money to charity or we think it's just not enough. It's I like love how easily, I mean, mm. you've directed and, and... But that's why I think it's so dope that you've done this because it's mm. such an important conversation to have. And I, I looked at your Twitter and I was stalking you a little bit. Mm. And you've always been a little bit outspoken, Anthony. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a good thing, though. Yeah, it's nice to see that. that as a filmmaker, you use your platforms to say what you yeah, think. Yeah, exactly. And, and I say it's real importance to this film and it's the first film I've actually made where the story really really needs to be told and mm. that was quite empowering actually and um, like I said the more we can start the conversation and uh, you know I'm not sitting here presenting solutions I'm just yeah. saying mm. we just need to talk about it guys because at the moment the channel buys us a lot of ignorance we really don't understand the weight of the situation and, and how many refugees Europe's taken on compared to like what we've taken on mm -hmm. it's, and it's not going to go away overnight, you know, and it doesn't matter how much distracting Brexit news there is, you know, this stuff's still burning away in the background. Well, they say, like, you know, real art is when you try and affect change and you try and do, and as a filmmaker, yeah. also as an actor, to be able to make a film like this and actually impact people in more than just an entertaining way is, I guess, what you guys, when you were little kids, hoped you'd be able to do. Mm -hmm. yes, and then you get exactly. to do it. Now, I'm thinking moving forward, mm -hmm. when you do something like this, what do you do after it? Like, do you have a break? Do you tell yourself we're going to do something completely different? Um, Anthony, are you That's already, a like... That's question. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm working on a few projects. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking about maybe doing something on TV next, which would be cool. Interesting. Series um, or Just a, a series, yeah, just because it's a bit more long form. I think you can tell stories... Uh, or you can give the stories more time to develop. You're not doing theatre again, or I'm you plan to? I'm taking a little break from theatre for a little bit. Could this be Game of Thrones? Yeah. Does it have anything to do with this? Yeah. Um, did you get any tips from the woman herself? Like, did you say, babe, I'm part of the family now. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me what to expect. It was a bit of a strange coincidence, wasn't it? it was yeah, just, oh my God. We sort of had the, the, like the two, and then... He got everybody from that little kind of joined the team. That wasn't somehow. an accident, was it? <laughs> Maybe you foresaw it. <laughs> also, you mentioned Mandeep, who plays um, uh, a really like one of the big characters yeah. in the film. Uh, she got cast in Doctor Who as the assistant. Amazing, she was brilliant in the film as yeah. well. So again, like, it was really nice to sort of 
be part of their journey. Yeah, I know, no, no, it's good. Really so cool. tell me, what can we expect? Like, it's super exciting for you for this to be coming up. Yeah, I mean, I can't say too much, but it's very, very exciting to be a part of it. Yeah. Um, back and forth to Ireland quite regularly. Yeah. Um, so have you been shooting loads already? Yeah. Yeah. We're kind of, yeah, we had a couple of weeks of pre-production yeah. and we, we were underway, so we won't be waiting too long. And when you found out you had it, who was the first person you told? Like, it must have been such no a big one. moment I had for you. To, I had to, no Shut one. Shut up! No Seriously, one. how long did you Just keep it secret? Just fearing to blow darts and spies and <laughs> wire, wire, wire taps. How long? I think I'd known for six months while I was doing that play. What, you didn't tell your mum? Nobody? Vic. Couldn't. Whoa! Couldn't, 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 You'd couldn't. You'd be the best person to have if you ever do a crime and you want someone to, like, lie for you. <laughs> <laughs> the best person. When can we... A lot of people know that already. <laughs> <laughs> when can we expect to see that? Like, any idea? Um, no idea of days, but um, the story itself is kind of set millennia before yeah. the Game of Thrones as we know it. Mm -hmm. And um, it's somewhat of a origin story, I guess. Okay. I think you've got a really epic voice, so I think you're going to be great in it. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Just working on the beard. <laughs> oh, you, the beard's got to get bigger. <laughs> snuck in a little bit there. Yeah. Guys, lovely to meet you. Anthony, congratulations. Thank I'm thank so glad you, you made this film. Um, and finally, lovely to meet you. So I'll say hi thank to Lena Rosario. She was amazing in it. Thank you. Perfect. Thank, thank, thank you, guys. He's going home. I suggest you do the same. In England. England will not want you. I've always been unwanted.